So I'm joined by 2021 four-star inside linebacker Reed Carrico. Reed Carrico. Reed was too nice to correct me during the taping, so that's what it is. Carrico, drag me in the comments below. Go the fifth dude into the 2021 recruiting class for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Reed, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm good, bro. Like, uh, I got to say how this started. So you tweet the steak emoji at me, and I'm like, man, I've never <laughs> talked to Reed before. I wonder if you'd be down and come to find out that uh, you were. So I appreciate this, man. Yep. Hey, man, it's great to be on the show. I've been watching you. Uh, I don't mean to break any hearts out there in Oklahoma, but I've been I've been watching your show since I got offered by OU. <laughs> wow. Uh, when did you get offered by OU? Ah, uh, like, I mean, it's like been like a year ago. It was okay. over the summer last year, maybe June or July. I can't really remember. But. Oh, man. So I got to throw this out there. Uh, Reed being six foot three, two twenty five, we get all that stuff. But the thing that I love most about you, man, is you are an old school throwback. Like, just <laughs> no, seriously. Like reading up on you, the stuff you're into, uh, country music, but also Metallica, and you're throwing names around like John Lynch and Mike Allstott. I'm like, yo, man, where are you from? Are you like a forty year old in a sixteen year old's body? You know, it's funny you say that because. I'm always, I always get told that, like, uh, people say like, man, you should have, you should have graduated high school in like the eighties <laughs> stuff like that, which, you know, like my high school, when I was like a freshman and a uh, sophomore, uh, we used to run a, a formation on offense called like the T formation. Most people call it like the wishbone or, uh, the full house, but we called it the T formation, like the formation that you'd see, like the Packers running if you went and, uh, or the Packers running if you went and watched them play like the old Super Bowls. So, I mean, it's, it's, we're kind of like where I grew up, we're kind of 20 years behind schedule as it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. So, I watched the huddle tape. And if you haven't, you should go watch the tape. Um, because now, now that you mentioned the OU thing, I, I can only think about that 28 on your chest and Adrian Peterson having worn that at Oklahoma. But also, yeah. you played the mic and the fullback. And a bone, like you said, it's T formation, but I see it as a wishbone. Like that's what it looks like. Yeah. And yeah. you're the up back, dude. In some of that stuff, and some of that stuff, they're actually running sweeps to you. And <laughs> you don't, you got one gear. <laughs> Your only gear is to run people over. You're not trying to outrun anybody. <laughs> you're just trying to hit um, people. That's just my style, man. I mean, I like to, I like to run people over when I got the ball, uh, just as much as I do liking to make uh, TFLs and stuff like that because. Uh, Run people over when you got the ball. Everybody sees it. Oh, man. And they're never going to throw a flag on you, no matter how, how hard exactly. you hit somebody. Yeah, there's no unnecessary roughness on the offense. <laughs> right. So, in watching the tape, the thing that jumps out to me the most, though, is you have a tremendous sense of fit, dude. Like, where did you learn how to fit so well and to read play so well? Uh, if I had to, I'd say, like, just where I've played just about every position on defense besides corner, like, uh, and safety, safety, probably I played safety through middle school and like my freshman and sophomore year. So when you play safety, you know, and you're playing the alley and stuff, you got to have the right fit. Or, I mean, if you, if you, uh, fit in somewhere in the scheme wrong or in the play wrong, I mean, it's a touchdown. Somebody's going to, uh, headbutt the goalpost. So when you're playing linebacker, you got a little bit more room to work and, uh, Oh, that's, so I'd say that's probably where I learned it, but uh, I've been playing football a pretty good while, too, so I got pretty good instincts as far as that goes. Oh, yeah, man, and I got to get into your background just a little bit here. For those of you who don't know, Reed is from Ironton, Ohio, which I think of as, like, northern Kentucky um, <laughs> because it's right there at a space where I think many people would say that part of Ohio is uh, synonymous with the South and the way that they go about life and the way that they go about playing football. Would you agree? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree on that. Um, some people, uh, like people up northern Ohio, like around Columbus or Cleveland, they might look at us like we are the south. But uh, really, like my part of Ohio, it's not really so much the south. It's more like Appalachia. Okay. Like being part of like the mountains and stuff. Like right now, I'm sitting in my high school parking lot, and I'm looking at hills. Hills go all the way like around the uh, our little city and the city across the river. And, uh, 
you know, it's just kind of like uh, it's different from the rest of Ohio because a lot of people think of Ohio and just think of cornfields and uh, crops and all that stuff. But where I'm from, you know, it's 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 hill country. So, um, but yeah, it's kind of like the South or like uh, Appalachia. I mean, whatever you want to call it, it's it's all the same. But so you come from a uh, or you not come from, but you play at a at a high school that's got what ten thousand people live in the city of Ironton. But you're from outside of there, right? I am. I, uh, I grew up or I live in, uh, Kitts Hill, Ohio, which is about roughly about 10 miles out of Ironton. And, uh, there's no high school or anything in Kitts Hill, you know, it's just a little, uh, kind of like a little settlement or whatever you want to call it. Um, but, uh, my dad, my dad went to Ironton high school and, uh, my grandparents did and stuff like that. So, uh, I've, they just sent me to Ironton, and uh, I think it was a pretty good choice. When did you know that you were going to have an opportunity to play big-time football coming out of that place? Um, I would say um, – I would probably say sophomore year because uh, sophomore year um, I got a lot more playing time and stuff that I did or uh, than I did when I was a freshman, and – um, it always seemed like for the, uh, bigger games or the better opponents and stuff like that, I always played better. I always rose to the occasion. So, uh, I figured that having that, uh, that attribute or, uh, trait that that would probably go a long way with, uh, uh, college coaches and everything like that. And, uh, really believe it or not, like you talk about me being old school and everything and, uh, looking like a 40 year old that's trapped in a 16 or 17 year old's body. Well, I played um, this past year's film. My junior film Mm -hmm. is actually, it looks more modern than my sophomore year film. If you go watch my sophomore year film, I look like I'm playing football in the 60s or something. (laughs) How so? I can can look back on it now and kind of make fun of myself. But, you know, there's so many highlights and stuff that I put on that tape where, you know, like I just said, yeah, I didn't run a touchdown right here, but. I about knocked this kid out or I, I, uh, I could have tackled him. Uh, I could have had a better TFL or whatever on the last play, but I'll put this one in here. Like there's a couple of plays in me, like running people down, like down the field and stuff. Like it, it was good. Well, it was man, good. Hey man, it was good enough to get you offers from not just uh, great institutions, but play places that play in college football playoffs and compete for national championships. But I, I read about how you decided to commit to Ohio State, and I thought that was interesting because there are two things. One, you didn't expect to commit going when you went to a visit, and two, you seem to think that kids from Ohio should aspire to play at Ohio State, and I wondered if you could expound on those things. Um, well, the way it went down when I committed, uh, I was going to hold off and wait for my official visits, which at the time it didn't really seem like it would be like, it'd be that long or that far away, like my officials. But now it seems like it's been an eternity since I've been committed. Mm. Like, it seems like I've been committed my whole life, mm. but, uh, I showed up to school that day and it was like week two or week three of the season. And I had no idea that I was going to, uh, commit to Ohio state later that day. But, um, we were about ready to go out for practice or uh, watch some film or something like that. And, uh, my coaches told me they were like, uh, pretty much like if you if you got a pretty good idea where you want to go or whatever you feel like you're going to fit there they're like pull the trigger on it because the spots are going to fill up you can't just wait forever you know if had i uh had i waited for my officials i would have gave clemson some more time tennessee some more time and all that uh some other schools like that wisconsin uk maybe oklahoma for rj young (laughs) (laughs) but uh you know, I just feel like uh, kids in Ohio, like, there's two types of people in Ohio. People that eat, sleep, and breathe Ohio State, mm. and people who get sick of hearing about Ohio State, <laughs> yeah. and they like other schools. And, uh, you know, I was just one of those kids, like, uh, my cousins and uh, uncles and stuff went to Ohio State, grew up an Ohio State fan, so it was, it was the right fit for me. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you want to go to the NFL, everything, and you're from Ohio, why not go to Ohio State? You know, like it's home. 
you know, it's just right down the road from wherever you're at in Ohio. It's just right down the road. It's right dead center, you know. No, man, that makes so. a, a lot of sense to me, and I'm I'm glad you put it in there about why you decided to take that spot because the this filling up the spots thing is real, right? And I think many people oh, don't yeah. give that a lot of thought because in you get an offer from a place like Ohio State or in Oklahoma or in Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, you you want to give that the appropriate amount of attention, but. I got to bring it up now, man. You picked up another commit in Jordan Hancock earlier today when we're talking. Yep. How do you feel about this class? It looks like an all-timer. Oh, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm fired up for everybody who's joined the class and everybody who's uh, thinking that they're going to join the class. Um, you know, there for a long time, we were focused on getting the number one class out there uh, just to kind of set the tone for when we come into college or whatever. But, you know, at this point, for me, I don't know. There might be some other guys in the class that kind of still are focused on the number one recruiting uh, class in the country. But for me, I'm just uh, – I want to get some guys who want to play at Ohio State. You know, mm-hmm. they, they love it. We love it. We all come together um, when it's time to show up in Columbus and get to work. Um, and if, if those guys happen to be the people that put us over the hump and give us the number one class, then so be it. Uh, if if they ain't, then screw it, man. I'd rather have somebody who wants to be a Buckeye than somebody who uh, is just joining because they want to be part of the number one class or something. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's just, uh, I guess it's kind of a loyalty thing uh, in one aspect, but you know, I, I don't want to have somebody who's just kind of committed, you know, or somebody who's just going to commit just for those three thousand followers or something like that. That's that makes me sick. Um, that's, that's all I got on that. But. Dude, uh, I got to ask, do you want to coach? Because you sound like a coach right now. You sound like a position coach. Well, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. My, my plan is to uh, get an engineering degree and uh, come back home after uh, playing at Ohio State if I don't get drafted. But I, I've certainly thought about being a coach. You know, it, it'd, be, it'd be a long life. Uh, being an armchair quarterback, you know. <laughs> what what kind of engineer? You say mechanical? Probably mechanical, mm-hmm. yeah. I gave uh, chemical engineering some thought, but uh, I got humbled by a couple chemistry tests uh, <laughs> through my junior year, so I, I figured that mechanical is probably more of a route I should take. Hey, man, that's my, my sister got, like, biosystems engineering down here at Oklahoma State. I don't even know what the hell that is. I just know that she runs a hospital. So, like, that's <laughs> – I'm with you. Like, I, I look at – when they start putting letters with the numbers, I got a hard time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Reed, is there anything else you want to talk about, dude, that we didn't touch on? Uh, no. Not that I know of, unless you got anything else for me, I, I ain't got none. Nah, man, just that uh, I've been really, really uh, fortunate to get to know some of you guys, uh, you included, uh, Jordan, Tamise, Adelier, Travion, I, and I, I really appreciate that you like the show, and I really appreciate that you're thinking about other schools, but I'm pulling for you. You know what I mean? I'm pulling for the Thank kids. Thank you. I'm pulling for whatever Thank you guys you. decide you want to do. I'm going to be here for it, and I can't wait to watch you play football in college. I appreciate you, man. I'll keep watching the show. I'll be watching every time you upload a video. I got the notifications set up and everything, dude. <laughs> You're the man, Reed.